take two. We're warm now. Hey guys, I'm Christopher and this is Zach. We are back on our 50th episode, Big Landmark, yeah. in the series. Last episode, it was a teaser. We promised power steering and here we are delivering. And I feel like the episode before that, we also said something about we were going to do some power steering. So uh, uh, today we're going to show you progress. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm excited too. Behold, this is our fully modified steering column. Well, I say fully modified, it's not welded up yet. Now we are going to walk you backwards on how we got here. So we'll take you through the processes of how we got all this stuff to fit uh, in this package. So here we go. I have our steering column bracketry housing and I'm about to cut it. It's a bit nerve wracking because we do have two of these, but we would like to not cut one of them up. And these are it. Besides the one that came out of the van, this is the only one we could find for sale on the internet at all. It just kind of highlights that when you're working with stuff like this, uh, especially modifying old parts, you get one shot at it. <laughs> so uh, needless to say, we measured, we measured again, then we measured again, uh, then we measured again, then we marked it, then we measured again, now I'm going to cut it. So, yeah, that's where we're at. Party peoples, you recognize that. That is one half of the original steering column housing. You might not recognize that. That's little two pieces of metal that I had cut for a previous project that I ended up not using. There's right now a washer between them to create a space. We're gonna take that and weld it here. Never mind this little bit of extra that's hanging off. That's gonna get cut off. So but anyway, we're gonna weld that there and then take a spinning wheel of death and slide it between the two and cut a slit in this tube. Creating a way for us to slide it over the power steering motor and then tighten those bolts and clamp it down. That's the current plan. That's where we are. So, uh, yeah. I guess I'm going to break out the welder. So we're deep into the project. We have cut it in half past the point of no return. Uh, in an ideal world, we would just take the component here that we want to retain and the component here that we want to retain and, and merge them. Okay, we could weld them. No, that's not what we're going to do. It's, it's so very close to a sleeve fit that that's what we're going to make happen. So in order to make this a sleeve fit, to make this imperfect world a perfect place to exist. Zach welded us basically a, a bike seat tube clamp is what this is. This is as far as we can disassemble this component because it's press fit on there and it's press fit about an inch and a half. I'm, I don't want to disturb that. It's been there for years. It's not going anywhere. It's nice and tight. So we still have to machine this. The original thought was to like, you know, stick a drill here, stick a drill here and sandpaper it as it rotates somehow, right? Real janky, right? But turns out we have access to a machine shop. 
So this is gonna get basically fixtured in to the spinning bit and we're gonna skim it off with the tool. This is the mandrel that's gonna help us accomplish that task. It's got a feature machined into it that uh, will help us with the inner diameter locating of the pipe. This is, the, this is what we need right here. And it helps us with the outer diameter because that's the diameter that this tube slides freely over. Right? That in combination with our bike clamp, bada bing, bada boom, we're ready to go. Thing cuts so good. 10 out of 10. This is important. This determines if we are incredibly lucky or have to do more work. It's interior diameter of this. Bum, bum, bum. What is it? 16.9. A little too big. A little too big. It's got a little bit of waller. Okay, so one of the few um, pieces that we can't machine that we have to reduce in diameter uh, manually is this shaft for the power steering motor. We can't take it apart, one, because it's attached to a planetary gear set in here and there's some sort of mechanism that prevents us from easily doing that. And two, if we were to take it apart and weld this on and then reassemble it, we couldn't because this, this housing here won't fit over this nub. So we're gonna work with this shaft, exposed as it is. We're gonna weld it up in place, and if we ever have to uh, service this unit, we'll have to we'll have to get a new one because it won't be disassemblable at all. Um, the way we're gonna reduce this spline is it only needs to go like a, a millimeter overall. What I'm doing is I'm taking my sharpie and I'm marking every spline, and then rotating the shaft. So as I go through the process of working down the diameter, I can do it like uh, methodically. So I mark the splines and then I have this guy that I can use to actually take thickness off of the of the diameter itself just by working one spline at a time. So what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll go back and forth like uh, four times and then it'll get a set thickness off of each spline, which will reduce the diameter, and then this guy will slide on here, probably after you know two or three rounds of doing this. But I basically take the tool and I go back and forth. I got it about fitting, slides on there most of the way. It's tight in some spots. But what we did was we marked it with green so that it can tell us where it's tight. And anywhere it rubs off, we'll just take a little bit more off in that area. There's like two spines that are a little tall, taller than they should be. All right, so it goes into about there where it starts to choke down because of the weld on the inside. But I'm happy with that for the moment. Clear. X equals 17.05. Enter.
right, here's our newest of brackets. It mates to the chassis at the bottom, and it mates to the power steering motor right here with these fun little bunny ears. We also got this little protrusion for future use. As you can see, we're going with a familiar tab and slot construction. It's worked in the past, and we're going to keep working with it today. Next thing we got to do is we got to nest all this on a sheet of steel ready for cam. All right, now these parts are ready for the plasma cutter, so let's move on over there. Ready? Yep. I think this needs to be welded before we do our demo because I just don't know how it can not be. Yeah. Behold, a welded up bottom bracket. Problem number, where are we on now? Four. We have to mount this steering angle sensor somewhere in the system. So we have to make a bracket it'll probably be built into this bracket that we make for mounting it somehow so that's got to live in there somewhere take a look guys we're at the point where it's starting to look like something it's looking like it's supposed to everything's the right size the right shape it's slid over the shafts like it should be um, what we're looking at down here right now is this area and the void that we have to work with. Now, ultimately what we want to do is put a sensor on. And that sensor looks like this. It's a steering angle sensor. Um, and it kind of sits in, in there like so. Like maybe like a Nintendo, you're slotting a game in, you know, chink, chink kind of thing. Um, and that interfaces with this puck, if you will, that keys on this feature of our extension shaft. We've gone through the trouble of 3D modeling all these and they seem to work pretty good. Um, we can slide them on and off. They, they seat mostly like we want it to. Um, but, you know, computers and the real life are often different and we found ourselves in that situation so now we have to do a reprint. Not the end of the world. Kind of expected this if we're being honest. And there she is, all in the car. Looks a hot mess, but most cars do. This little guy right here, this little gray box, we haven't really talked about because it is the least of our problems. It's just the computer controller for the power steering motor. And it just has to be mounted somewhere. It's probably gonna live right about there underneath the dash. the fruit of our labors. Now we get to take it out and weld it all up. Okay, I'm gonna break this guy down and start getting it prepped for welding up.
Woo. All right, I've started my weld prep. I've got two big old holes in our shaft. Every time we have to cut or drill or do something to the shaft, it's just like, ugh. Cause like I said, we've got two and that's it. Which should be plenty. But now you can see when I slide it on here, I've got room for some big fat plug welds that I'm gonna make. And that's how we're gonna join the shaft. I'm gonna do two plug welds here and then I'm probably gonna come up 90 degrees and do two more holes here and here. And that should be plenty uh, for that. So uh, I'm gonna drill these other two holes. Then I have to do a lot of cleaning here. And then on this end, I'm gonna clean this all up real good. And then it'll be ready to weld it all up. Well, here it is, a powerized steering column we've worked on for quite a while. The wheel still turns. We were a little bit concerned about that, you know. Anytime you're welding shafts, it could kick a bearing out of a line, and, and now you're yeah. not doing so good. Put some pretty big, fat plug welds to get those two shafts to make up. And I mean, we did our best to keep the heat out. I put wet rags on it, all that. But in the back of your mind, there's always that, like, Am I melting some small plastic bushing in there? <laughs> but we didn't. It works. Yeah. Yay. So we're going to throw it in the van, do some testing offline. You may or may not see any of that, assuming it's exciting. Um, either way, in two weeks, we'll be seeing you again at the same exact time at this same exact place. And... <laughs> All right. Well, it's been uh, like six weeks of fun, but it's coming to an end. Um, Tune in next time. I'm sure you'll see it in the car as we move on to a new project. Uh, until then, be good people. <laughs>